Hey guys, welcome to the Beyond the Craft podcast. If you don't know me, I'm Robbie Good. I raced amateur motocross and supercross and now currently train motocross and hockey athletes. And now starting this podcast, so we'll see how this goes. Um, But mainly what I wanted to do with this podcast is over the past couple of years racing and uh, doing that whole journey, I got to meet so many awesome people, so many people that not only helped me in my racing, but helped me in my life. that just, I wouldn't have been able to learn anywhere else. And basically I just want to show off how awesome these people are. And uh, I have some really cool people in mind for this. Um, one that you're about to hear, he's awesome. Uh, Josh Sullivan, he is from Paparazzi Imaging and Films. He runs that. Um, his work is absolutely killer. He works just magic behind the camera. It's super cool. Um, I'll link all of his uh, videos and work uh, in the description or whatever it is i'm still learning this whole podcast thing work with me here um but uh yeah i just want to show off these people um pick their brain um they have some cool perspectives cool stories cool things they're working on now and um i think it'll be fun to do and uh hopefully you guys enjoy it because even just doing this first one i already filmed this one that you're about to listen to uh i absolutely had so much fun um i'm gonna get better at this so bear with me It, it took a little bit of uh feeling out how this whole thing goes hosting it. I've been on a few of podcasts before, uh, but it's a little bit different hosting it. So uh, I'll get the hang of it, I'm sure. Um, But I just thank you so much for uh, listening to this and checking it out. Um, If you've made it this far already, I'm already just so thankful for it. Um, And I appreciate your time. But uh, without talking anymore, here's Josh. Just put a record on spin. Poured up some OJ on ice. I got this feeling inside, couldn't stop if I tried, I said this is the lies. Oh, you said it right, you said it right, this is the lies. All right, so how have you been? I've been really good, dude. Uh, You know just living living the dream man here in the midwest and just trying to trying to get my feet in the water with everything out here awesome dude so i I mean this is episode number one for me and i was thinking about like the people i wanted on this podcast and basically like my main goals to start off like i just wanted people that definitely impacted me and like my racing and stuff and i just wanted to kind of like give them the spotlight that may or may not have always gotten the spotlight as much as they should be. And uh, you were one of the first people that came to my mind. Um, so I know you well, but if you want to like tell everyone else about a little bit about yourself, what do you do for a living and what you're chasing? Um, yeah, dude. Uh, I've been shooting for, uh, I think it's 10 years now, shooting videos and photos professionally. Uh, started on the East Coast, um, basically right out of high school. Um, this is what I wanted to do. And I just went full on into it. Um, obviously, I couldn't go full time right away. But, you know, my my goal was to go full time. And I've been just plugging away, just doing my thing. And and now I'm here living on the uh, in the Midwest in Minnesota. Um, went full time, I think, a year and a half ago. Um, but other than that, <clears throat> um, just just trying to make <laughs> make waves with everybody you know trying to go big i got a lot of i got a lot of things going on right now with a lot of corporate companies um and just enjoying enjoying the ride yeah that's absolutely awesome i mean i first got into seeing like your work when uh it was like completely coincidental when i was uh training down at uh, west virginia with aj catanzaro and you were doing a shoot with him and that was how i got my introduction to you which i had no idea that was going on or anything that day i was just getting coaching from him and uh then that was when i connected with you and when that video came out i was like man this guy can put in some work like this this stuff's awesome i don't know i just noticed like especially like with my video and stuff i figured like for videos that have like no like words or like talking or anything about the personality of someone, you really know how to like bring out the personality of the riders just by strictly showing the riding and like the video, the flow of it. Like, I feel like it, you can connect to a deeper level than just the normal like Insta banger, you know? 
Right. Yeah, that's the whole thing is I, I like to have a lot of grit, a lot of emotion, um, a lot of behind the scenes, a lot of personality, like you said, that bring the video to life. I just don't want to go into a shoot not knowing who the person is, you know, and yeah, you know, hey, what's up, man? I'm just here to, to make you a video. I don't want to know anything about you. You know what I mean? Like that, I like to get people, get to know them on a personal level. And that's what makes a, a video come to life in my eyes. You know what I mean? I raced for five years and I kind of have an idea of what everybody likes. And, and it's, it's all those elements put together that makes a video come to life as you know your video aj's video a lot of my content it's it, <laughs> the people that, that have watched my stuff they always say i feel like i'm right there in the moment in that video with what's going on yeah i mean i felt like you just brought up the like whole energy of that whole day like i remember that day really well just because that was my like first race weekend back after like some pretty good injuries happening that year but <laughs> So, like, just that whole, like, energy, like, I felt like it was just, like, brought to life in that video, and I feel like that, like, day just, like, was on. Not that it was, like, anything, like, crazy of a day, but, like, just that video is something, like, I'm always going to cherish um, just because of, like, what it brought out. Now, did you go to school or anything? Did you go, like, any type of trade schools, or how did you go about, like, really taking it seriously? So, it all, it all really started um, in high school <clears throat> um, with my racing career. I, like I said, I raced for five years um, and it kind of got too expensive for me. I, I ended my career, I don't know, at the tail end of my high school, you know, at, at the end of high school, really. And um, during those last last years, um, my dad, he had an old camera. It was an old uh, Nikon 35 film camera. And I, I kind of messed around with it. I took some photography classes um, film classes to be exact. I was in the dark room developing old film, you know what I mean? With the projectors and stuff like that. It was, it was actually a really cool experience. Um, but I took the class into my own hands. I just went into the field and I just started taking pictures at a local track, Walden MX. That was where I was or lo locally where I raced. And I started selling pictures. I had my own website going and the teacher was like, I don't normally do this, but I'm going to pass you because you're so high up to what people in my classes are doing. And I, next year I'm going to start doing digital, doing websites. So he was like, he was baffled that I was doing all this stuff. So after that, I didn't do any, any trade schools. I didn't go to school for it. I'm really all self-taught, you know, awesome. going on YouTube, I guess you could consider that a school going on YouTube. I mean, it's basically it. at this point, but it's dude, it's way better than paying that uh that student debt that I'm about to embrace. But <laughs> it's a whole other topic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome. Um, now, so what are you working on now? Like, is there anything special coming up that you can like talk on? What are you working on now that you're excited about? Like, what's getting you going every morning right now? Um, you know, just, oh man, that's a tough question because there is so much going on right now. Um, like I said earlier, I have a, a big, try to keep it low, but a $6 million corporate company that, that approached me last year and they want me to do all their marketing, not marketing, but the, all their social media videos, content, everything. And, um, to spill the beans really, uh, last week we kind of came to an agreement on on things and i actually start working on monday hopefully you know what i mean yeah uh, hopefully um but that's that's the biggest thing that i have going on right now and i'm kind of diving into car stuff um i'm not too sure if you're familiar with like dirt car racing they have modifieds they have um super stocks uh sprint cars um a couple other ones but i'm going to be going to a lot of a lot of dirt car racing coming up in the next three three to four months and i feel like that is going to be another outlet for me to get my name out there with a different kind of industry you know not just snowcross motocross you know portrait you know 
stuff like that that I norm that people normally know me for. Um, even though it is motor motorsports related, I feel like it's it's a different thing that I have not done yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's super cool. Um, I've only been to like a couple races, but that's stuff's crazy too. I'm sure it's it, it, I'm sure it's cool because there's a lot of correlation with the whole motorsports industry. So I feel like just the flow of it going with your website or whatever, just all that type of work and kind of get people looking at your pictures beyond they're just their own like just looking at like their own dirt bike pictures that they got they might have have taken of them over the weekend they might see oh there's sprint cars let's take check out some of these pictures and they're like oh maybe i should go to one of these races like i feel like that could just alone just expand both industries maybe yeah that is very true yeah i, I never really looked at it that way <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool though um so you're working on that now with the snowcross thing. How has that been working? I know you were working with a team for a while. Where's that at? Yeah. So uh, this this past winter, I got hooked up with a really big team. Uh, they were a factory skidoo team. Uh, we had some really really heavy hitters on uh, a part of that program, and me working for them was, you know, probably a dream come true because. Yeah, as you know, working with certain people, you just get a certain vibe. And I had that certain vibe where I could go into that trailer and I could joke around with the guys. It wasn't all serious and business and it made it so much better. Um, but with that, I had outside clients, I had sponsors, I had other things that was going on. And and snow this year, Snowcross was probably the best year that I've shot um with the group of people that I was working for that were you know just on my side um and I had a colleague that actually I met prior year in 19 and 20 um and we we kind of got really close and he would help me take pictures if I needed it or if he wanted me to take some vo uh, video or whatever you know what I mean we collabed very well together and uh, we kind of created a partnership without really calling it a partnership. And, you know, again, like I said, it made the season that much better because we just worked so well in tune with each other. This coming season, we're actually going to collab even more. He's going to take over my photo side and I'm, I'm going to just go strictly video. Um, and I didn't, I haven't really told a lot of people, but we're going to be getting our own van with offices and built in so we could travel. And, you know, his plan is he, he wants to go full time with me. So it's like, you know, there's a lot of elements that are coming together where I don't even think this would have happened a year and a half ago, honestly. That's so cool. Yeah. I mean, it, it's super crazy. Cause I was like, getting ready for this I was like going back on like your videos and, and stuff and just kind of seeing like the progression like I, I don't really know like I don't know how like all the details of like video editing like I have a very like very basic knowledge of things um but I just feel like always like like I haven't seen like a video that was like just inconsistently like bland like I, I don't it's kind, of, it's kind of like going off track a little bit, but like, I feel like a lot of videos, there's like a lot of people are like basing it off of the song and stuff like that. But then I've seen like with yours, the overall flow of how like the camera's moving and the way the video is at, like the actual flow of the, the camera work itself, not so much the editing, but the actual flow of like how the camera's being manipulated is like so much more elite than like what you see a lot of times with kids that can just pick up a camera, shoot and make a quick little insta banger um how did you go about like developing that skill without like going to school and stuff like that was it literally just all trial and error or was it just kind of like an easy knack that you just you picked up right away yeah it's funny that you say that um because you know any kind of craft i feel that you know you you kind of going back to the whole youtube thing i would i would watch a lot of youtube um, and a lot of motorsports and, you know, a different kind of camera work and, and movies really is what kind of, kind of really hit my mark on my style of shooting and then taking pieces of everything that I thought was really cool, like manipulating the camera, having a Ronin, having a tripod, having a drone 
and just doing things that people would be like, oh, I've seen that before, but the way that he did it is different than what I was imagining in my head. So yeah, it's, <clears throat> I don't know how I just, I just did it. You know what I mean? Every, every shoot, I have a vision in my head, like your video, I had a, just had a thought in my mind and I was like, this is the way that I think it would look really cool along with your personality um, and doing different movements, doing everything differently and, and getting tight shots, but also wide shots and just, I don't know. I just do it. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. come to a point where I just do it. It's hard to explain, but it's, it's awesome to see that, you know, people are starting to pick up on, on how I do certain things, how I do this, my editing style, you know, all the different elements that come into it. Um, yeah. So that's, that's basically it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I felt like what I noticed, like when you did the video with me, like when I was like looking at your equipment and how you're going about everything, like this guy isn't like just a filmer, like this is like a straight up like production. Like I felt like I was being like shot for like a documentary a couple of times. I was just like, I don't feel like I deserve this right now. <laughs> it was, but it was, right. it was super cool though. But yeah, that's... <laughs> I, I was super blown away just because like when you pulled up in the car and everything and then you just started unloading everything. I'm like, this guy's got like this whole production set in the back of this, this coupe. <laughs> I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> and it's it just like, it like, it sparked to me just because like the way you're going about it was just kind of like gritty. Like, you know, like I was sleeping in like the back of my Tahoe. I was super like minimalist and like seeing that, like I just instantly related to it. Like I thought that was super awesome. Right. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And and that's another thing too, is I don't, I might brand myself as, you know, being a very high valued video guy or photo guy, but it's, it's what I bring to the table. Like you just said, man, this guy's driving a freaking Toyota Corolla and he just magically <laughs> unrolls this magic carpet of equipment and, and people are amazed at the at the final product of what I can develop and they sometimes they don't take me seriously I'm like just wait till it's done you know wait till the final product and then they're like okay this guy was serious I'm not gonna let him go you know what I mean I want more 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 and and it's just it's it, it's quite comical because there's so many people out there that just don't think that I take this seriously and I'm like like you could look at my portfolio, you could look at everything, you could talk to people and they'll tell you the same exact thing that I'm just, I do this as a profession. You know, I joke around like I do it for fun, but I really take it as seriously as I can. Yeah. And that's, I think, super noticeable. I remember like watching, like when you were doing the filming for AJ and I'm like seeing him like take certain shots. I'm like, I don't understand what that, what that's going to be for or anything. And then watching like the finished product, I'm like, I would have never thought of like how that flows and transfers. I'm like, this is so sick. I don't know. I, I was super blown away by it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think a lot of people were because, you know, especially being on a super cross track, that was a lot different for me, but you know, it was like, I got a, I got a pro guy here. I'm not going to mess this opportunity up or, or come come to the post-production side and be like, man, I wish I got that shot. But I, you know, I, I think I executed that, vi that video very well. And I have actually had a lot of compliments on that from people that I don't even know. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's super cool. Now, one, one of the questions I have, that's a little bit more random. Do you have trouble like summertime versus like wintertime with your, like your equipment with like batteries and stuff like that? Like I was always thinking like, when you're doing the snow crawl stuff, it's super cold. Like, do you have troubles with that? That's a good question. Um, yeah. Going from summertime to wintertime, obviously there's a temperature, temperature change. Um, but I actually experienced for the first, maybe for the first time. No, cause I was in Valcourt in 16 and that was negative 40 degrees. Um, but this Thanks. past winter, it was nuts, dude. It was that that race was crazy. I couldn't even like my eyelashes was freeze because it was just so cold. But 
this past winter, we were in Fargo, North Dakota, and it was about negative 45. And it was bone chilling cold. Um, I couldn't charge my batteries fast enough. My cameras, one camera was freezing. And I was just like, oh my God, I got to get through this weekend and, you know, just make it through. Um, and luckily, you know, I did, I had a second camera that I could use that was, you know, it was my secondary, um, because my first, my first camera was being iffy, you know, I didn't really like <laughs> negative 45 as, as opposed, I don't think anybody would, but, uh, you know, yeah, there was a lot of malfunctions. I wasn't the only one that was having malfunctions. There was a bunch of people. Um, so we, we did our best. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was always wondering that I was like I know like how like quickly like a smartphone like dies. I wasn't sure if that correlated the same. Is it bad yeah. in like normal like winter conditions at all, or is it just when it's extreme like that? Yeah, when it's extreme like that, um, there's really nothing you can do. You know, if you if you go um, into a cold environment, like you know anything negative ten is very cold. Um, and then you go into a warm trailer, you're going to, you're going to experience some condensation as you would, you know, having a cold house to, or whatever, you know what I mean? It's cold to warm, warm to cold. Um, and that, that was the struggle that I was having is I didn't want to bring my stuff into a warm environment and then go outside and have it sweat and then it freeze up and ruin the electronics. So it was like, it was very tricky of a scenario. I would only take my batteries and I would, luckily, one would be charging, and I had a couple others that were, you know, staying warm that were already charged. Um, other than that, it was, you know, survival of the fittest. <laughs> Who's going to make it, you know? But uh, typically, snowcross, snowcross is um, between negative five to you know, our highest was probably 60 degrees. And that was a wild race because we really didn't have any snow. We had a big track, but like around the track was all dirt, grass. It was, it was pretty bad. It blows my mind that those things can still like run on like stuff like that. They still run through grass tracks and stuff like that. It's kind of crazy. I don't know. Yes. Well, I, my knowledge of the sport is like just based off of like watching your videos. Like the one of my favorites that I saw was like the one under the, you know, I think you have a couple under the lights, but I think it was one of your more recent ones. And that one was like super mind blowing to me. Is that, is it just pro racing or is there like an amateur scene? Like, I don't know a whole lot about it. So I don't know if you could expand on that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so races typically start, um, like 8 30 9 o'clock like a typical outdoor national or supercross well i shouldn't say supercross because they don't start till like what noon um but like outdoor nationals they start early um or even a amateur race um like your locals um they start early they have their amateur stuff they have their um like mini sleds up to transitions which is basically like a 125 class kind of media intermediate um and then the pros they come into around noon, noon o'clock, and then they race all the way up until nine, 10 o'clock at night. So it's, yeah, pros are, are basically the only ones that are racing under the lights. It's pro women. Um, and then they have a class called a um, 120 champ class, which is like a, it's a 120 Briggs and, Briggs and Stratton, but they're modified. They're like, they're like $20,000 sleds. They're more than a pro sled. It's crazy how much money people throw at those things. But yeah, it's just pro, pro women, sport class, which is like your, uh, I don't know, it's not pro amp because that's pro light. Um, so maybe like a pro sport A, maybe if you consider it at like Loretta Lynn qualifiers or something like that. Um, but those are basically the only ones that run under the lights. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. So moving forward, it would the goal be more working in like a commercial environment or I mean, I mean, I guess that would be commercial too, but like more lifestyle stuff, or would you want to be trying to like move towards something like working for like Feld, like in Supercross or what's kind of the couple year ahead goal game plan that you have going? 
Sheesh. It, it, you know, it changes day to day because, <laughs> uh, you know, there's just so many things going on in, in the world of production. You know, one day I might, might think that I have it figured out. And then the next day I'm like, oh, man, I might want to go do this. You know what I mean? Um, but I think the, the one thing that I really have in mind is I kind of want to just be a movie producer. You know, I think that would be really cool to be like a Steven Spielberg or, you know, um, oh, what the heck is his name? The guy that um, did, uh, um, uh, the one movie with John Travolta. Uh, I'm terrible with producer names. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Pulp Fiction. Uh, Quentin Tarantino. You got, you got the shirt uh, on. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, this is <laughs> that, the logic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I was just man. meaning, like, the graphic. I was thinking yeah. that. That's so <laughs> funny. So that that would be kind of my my end goal. If I can't get to that, um, it would probably be, you know, working in, like, a high tail end of maybe a Feld um, or just doing, you know, like a multi-million dollar corporate companies commercials you know maybe like toyota or you know a tire company or something something within that expenditure um because i feel like i could just really be in tune with what i'm doing you know like i like we talked about th this whole time i just feel like that's my realm you know what i mean and and i could have somebody come in and be like all right i need you to do this while i'm going doing something else or i could just have them do the video and I'm like looking into a monitor and be like, yo, that was sick. All right. You know what I mean? Like the producer kind of deal. Um, but that's, that's really my end goal, you know, maybe making, maybe working with my boy Cole beach at Feld cause he's, he's killing it right now. Yeah. It's cool you seeing know? his work. Now, how, yeah. Have you ever like, do you ever notice watching Supercross? how like, at least in my opinion, how awful like the angles sometimes the like, the cameras are like just like how awkward they are they don't showcase like how intense a supercross track is did you ever think of like that idea of like almost production work in the actual like racing scene of actually being able to like showcase what these riders are actually having to endure because like i feel like i know like everyone always says like the camera can't always show like everything and i get that but at the same time i feel like some of those angles it's like I see the work you're doing. I see the work other people are doing. They can show these angles on an Instagram video. Why can't they show that a little bit more in a TV setting? Right, right. Well, I do. To answer your question, I do um, always, when I'm watching Supercross or Outdoors, I'm always like, man, they should have like a better angle um, on on just, just the racing aspect because some of like you said, some of the angles aren't flattering. They're like, oh, what the heck is that? A whoop section should be really gnarly. And, and they're like zoomed way out. And it looks like they're just going over like, I don't know, speed bumps that are really nothing. You know, um, I think because I see it in snowcross. I see it now doing truck racing. I forgot to mention that I do truck racing as well here in the summertime. And just the way that they cover it is pretty boring. And it's unflattering but now you know um now it's no cross and, and the truck racing they actually have a professional drone flyer that goes right up on the trucks and it is wicked cool you know it's a different aspect it's almost like the cable cam but the cable cam in supercross isn't you know it's so zoomed out that they have to fit everything into the frame and they're so minimalistic with what they're shooting that it's like you can make it more presentable you know I, I should just say that they should make it more presentable because everybody's out there putting everything on the line and you know it's just i, I don't know i think it's quite boring <laughs> yeah it's... i find i find sorry to cut you off i find commentary of like Jeff Emming or whatever his name is, Ricky Carmichael. I actually like listening to them more than watching the racing, if that's any indicator of how bad the coverage is. Not bad, but just unflattering. Yeah, I'm sure you see it to a whole new extent compared to even what my just eye sees. 
And like, it, it just kind of drives me a little bit crazy because like, there's just so many different details to the sport that like aren't being showcased. And I feel like if people like, really could actually like see it from the outside eye, they would be drawn into the sport a little bit more. Like, like you said, the whoops, they look like they're going over speed bumps. Like you said, meanwhile, they could like they'll come up to my chest if I'm standing right. in between them. Like no one realizes that. And it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, and it, that's what blew my mind too, is like, you're one person and you can get an angle, like a hundred different angles on a whole track of one rider somehow in a day. Like I had four right. motors and you had like an angle of every single part of the track for me. They have like this whole production crew of all these filmers and all these things. Like, it's not like they have like a lack of help. It's not like it's one guy trying to film the whole thing from a helicopter. Like, it just, I know, right? I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe there's stuff I'm missing, but I think that's something that could definitely be worked on. And I think there's an opening there for sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, going back onto how my way of production is, and a lot of people compliment me on, on the shooting aspect. Um, like we we're talking, just being on the track at multiple times, people are like, how did you get that shot when you're just over there and produce this long video in a matter of hours with just being yourself? And I'm like, well, that's my job. You don't, you don't have to worry about that. You know what I mean? I'm doing it for you and just worry about the final product. But I, I find it very amusing that these production companies have multiple guys and I can get just as much as those multiple guys if not more, you know what I mean? Being on a track, I'm sure I could probably kill it at Supercross if I really tried. Um, and, you know, be be the next Danny Stewart. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that yeah. dude's a legend. That's sweet. So what would you say would be like, what's holding you back from like what your your goals are right now? Like, what do you need to work on? What what has to maybe fall into place? I know this, this industry is kind of like a, who do you know type of thing in a lot of ways, which I think a lot of industries are, but like, what do you think could get you to that next level? What, what is going to get you to that next level? Cause I know you're going to do whatever you want to do, but. Yeah. Um, to the next level, I think um, just not, not putting up a wall of my expectations because that's a, that's a day-to-day -day occurrence with me, excuse me, um, that I have is that I, I put up these walls that I don't think I can achieve that or, or get to where I think I deserve to be, you know what I mean? Um, and I, I think everybody has that because they're afraid. I, sh I should say that a light, lightly because, you know, some might hurt some people's feelings, but <laughs> um. But, you know, like the fear factor of not thinking that you're good enough, you know what I mean? That's that's the thing that's holding me back is that I don't think, um, one, I don't think people would take me seriously. Two, um, I do have that little mental block getting me to that next level, you know? So that's, that's, my, that's my thing, you know? And once... I, I kind of make a joke about it with music. When some when somebody shows me new music, I'm like, I would have never listened to that, but now I now I like it. Now I can't stop replaying it on my iPod or on my phone or whatever. And and I think that's the same analogy as it is to getting to the next step. You know, just not thinking it's going to be a good vibe when it really is. You know. Yeah. Now, do you think like experience would fix that? Do you think just maybe like some type of breakthrough with a video? Like what, what would get you over that, that bump? Do you think, do you have, do you think about that often? Do you, do you practice like just mental game? Like it's not just for athletes. I mean, I think it's for everyone. Like, what do you do? Like, do you often think about like how you can get through that, that breakthrough? Um, yeah, I, I actually do. And recently, um, being moving to the Midwest has actually helped me bridge that gap of knowing that I could get to the to that 
new obstacle that I want to get to. And, and I'm actually currently reading a Tony Robbins book and that's actually helping me um, get to a different mindset, um, going to the gym, doing all these things that, you know, people forget to do meditate, doing a little bit of yoga, you know, it kind of gives me a little more sense of clarity that, I could do whatever the hell I want if I really put my mind to it. You know what I mean? There's nothing stopping me except for myself and I need to stop stopping myself. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think you've pushed yourself to like a certain point, like you're full time with this. Like you've obviously made the jump and you've made different leaps and bounds. Um, so you've obviously had that like never quit mentality because I know it's not easy to be able to just take that on as a full time job, as a career. Um so you obviously have that, you, you, you have a drive, you got a, a strong game there. It's, it's just like finding that edge to be able to tell yourself you can win, not just not be able to lose. Um, I talked about this on uh, Tyler McAdams podcast uh, recently. That should be out soon. Um, for me racing, I always had a never say die mentality. Like I was, it was, you're not going to break me, but I never had the mentality to get myself to win. I believe that I was a winner. I just had to, realize it like I just always thought I, I'm not going to let this beat me um so that's something that I found that was a, a huge struggle for me and something that I would just check out that that's helped me out a ton is uh there's a uh, book called it takes what it takes uh by Trevor Moad he uh works with a lot of different NFL players biggest ones were uh Russell Wilson and uh his old mental game is about uh staying neutral because positive it's hard to dig into those positive like vibes when you're nervous everything's shaken up who knows what's going on but his biggest thing is if you can just eliminate the negative the the, the negative side of it staying at a neutral level you're going to be able to at least leave your emotions you're able to detach and actually fully focus on the task at hand um, and believe in yourself strictly off of what you're done in the past and what you work on currently um he was talking about how like just like verbally saying something negative is seven times uh more effective um than a, saying something positive out loud so just like it's eliminating the negative um and getting yourself the neutral at least bring it to a certain level of just being able to focus on the job at hand and i know that was kind of a riff there but something to just check out not only for yourself but i think everyone should be reading this book <laughs> no absolutely you know and that's a that's a great uh that's a great way to look at at life just in general um because you know, I'm looking at your story, you know what I mean? And when you're, when you're saying that, I just kind of reflected on, on the injury that you had or the big crash of, of your career. And I'm like, this dude, Robbie's gone through it all. You know, he's, he's had mental struggles, physical struggles, but you know, he never gave up, you know what I mean? And as I mature, as, a, as anybody matures, um, I think, you know, having that mental strength and just saying that you're going to, you, you can only go up. You don't want to go back. You don't want to turn back time. And, you know, that's, that's just a way to, to, to have a mindset is just keep going forward. Cause what's the point of telling yourself no, and just keep, like you said, keep repeating the negativity and you're not going to go anywhere with that. You know what I mean? I don't like that mindset. <laughs> As you said, my mindset is, you know, I have all the tools in my toolbox to, to make it. And, you know, this will be, this winter coming up will be my second year going full time. And, and that's where I want to be. You know what I mean? I had the end goal of just, this is it. I'm not going to work for my dad no more. I'm not going to do construction. I love cameras. I love video and people. And this is what makes me happy. And takes the stress of everything day to day away you know and i think that's what everyone should be wanting to do for a living like you say <laughs> that you can see you lighting up like i wish that's just like everyone's energy like when they're talking about their career like that's like i do not want to go to school whatsoever but like i'm going in for uh exercise science because i want to train people like i want to be able to get people to be able to be stronger faster i want them to be able to live longer like that's what gets me excited that's what puts a smile on my face and uh like that that's a big reason why i want to talk to you because you're a huge like person that has that that story of like just just go after like what you really want to do and what actually 
puts a smile on your face, not thinking about what your paycheck's going to look like, not thinking about what all these little stresses of adulthood get in the way of being able to actually chase your dream because otherwise, what are you doing? Yeah, absolutely. I I think a lot of people forget about that. You know, they, they, like you said, just chasing a paycheck and, and thinking that, um, that everything's going to be okay when you go, you go get a a desk job. Are you really happy with that desk job? I don't think so. Cause I wouldn't be, you know, it's, it's miserable. It's, it's what, it's what the stigma of the reality of what everybody thinks that you should do, you know, go outside your bounds, find what makes you happy and, and, and just kill it. You know what I mean? My dad, it's at at such a young age. He's like, you're going to, you're going to regret not traveling. You're going to regret not doing what you wanted to do in life. You're going to regret um, not taking the chances of failing. But yet, if you fail, it's always going to be a good success story because you never quit. And, you know, being on social media, being, um, being around negativity, negative people, um, isn't going to help you get there either. So you kind of have to pick and choose your surroundings and who you're going to be involved in and being around people that are driven, you know, and that's, that's the people that I like those. That's the people that I hang out with. That's the people, you know, they put a smile on my face, even when I'm really down and they're like, man, I seen you happy yesterday. What the hell happened? And I'm just like, I just, I don't know. But, you know, talking to you is helping me get back to my ways of being happy. And, you know, it might be, it might be a good thing. It might be a bad thing, but, you know, ultimately um, the happiness comes within and to have support is a really big, big thing in your equation of finding what makes you happy as well. Yeah, that's, that's huge. Like your circle is, is everything. I, I'm very much that introverted type of person. So like, I'm always like real tight with my circle in general. And then when it comes to like racing and stuff like that, like who I would really want me around that really got, that got really tight. I, yeah, it, it's, it's certain people without even like saying anything, they can just kind of change the whole vibe of the situation and stuff like that. And you almost feel, you almost feel, and then you'll, it's like a mind game to yourself. Cause then you're like, am I that fragile that like someone's just throwing off how I'm feeling right now at a race. But at the same time, it's, it's a real thing for sure. Yeah. And, and even in motocross, you know, you got to have a mental strength, you know, 110% all the way. Cause you know, that is, that is like, if, if you've never grown up in motorsports or any kind of competitive uh, sports or anything like that, you, you won't ever understand you know, um, how mental it is, you know, cause it is a big mental game. You could, you could be like, I'm not going to win this race. You're on the gate and you, you could say, I'm not going to win this race. And you don't win the race. You know what I mean? You got to say that you're a winner and, and that's just how you're going to evolve is you tell yourself you're going to win her. You're a winner. You're going to win, you know? Yeah, that's for sure. I I find for me to get myself like what I've been able to progress a a good bit as to getting myself more into that win state and not that never quit state. It's just by working hard. Like if I just keep myself moving at a constant rate to the point of like this watch telling me like, don't do anything more for the rest of the day and telling me (laughs) that I should go to sleep. If I can work till then I'll have all the confidence in the world because I know I couldn't do anything more. Um, you have to be careful with that. You don't want to put all of your energy into the wrong area and it might not go anywhere. Um, that's what I found for myself racing. I mean, I, I don't know where, where it was going to go, where it could go. Um, but I'm happy with where I'm kind of leaning away from it. I, I absolutely loved racing, but I found for myself, I, I fell more in love with the training during the week than I loved the racing itself. I, I loved the traveling, the different races. I loved all the things around the racing, but I can't say a lot of the races I truly enjoyed in and of itself. Um, I, I enjoyed the hard work and that's why I really got into the, the training side of it. I like seeing other people progressing. I like seeing my body progressing. Um, that's what got me excited. So that's where I kind of started directing my energy. And that's what I fought with myself for a bit. Cause I always pushed don't quit and stuff like that. And I'm kind of like, 
in a way quitting racing, but I'm, I'm still going to be in the racing scene, like full out. Like I'm, I'm going to be more involved in the racing scene than I was as a racer. I feel like just because I, I want to make a huge impact. Um, a lot of things coming out with that soon. Um, along with this podcast, I just, I want to be able to bring out the light of the sport and I want to bring out what, what's, what's what it's really about because all these podcasts and stuff are all just about like the, the winner and stuff like that i want to talk to people that had a gritty past and grinded right. it out and all that stuff and like once again i'm on like a little bit of a riff but that's that's where i'm at <laughs> yeah i know for sure you know that's that's awesome and and finding your outlet in in the motorsports um you going into the fitness aspect of it is is really, you know, I think it tells your grit of who you want to be. You know, you like putting in that hard work and, and like you said, seeing other people put in that hard work and, and seeing the end result. I think that's, that's, uh, that's tells a lot about who you are as a character, you know, as, as you progress through this whole thing. And maybe you'll get back on a motorcycle after, you know, you, you get a couple clients and you're like, wow, this is, now it's more fun than ever. You know what I mean? Cause you're not really, you're doing, you're doing it for you, but you're not just, you're doing it for other people as well. And then you find enjoyment out of that. It's kind of, you know, it's balance yeah. and finding that balance is what's really important. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like I said, I, I just find like a lot more enjoyment out of seeing other people progressing and seeing what they can get out of themselves. I, I was absolutely like blown away. Uh, one of my clients that I've been working with for about five months now, uh, he's lost a tremendous amount of weight and he's a super skilled uh, athlete, but he he's, has a lot of just fat and just mm -hmm. lack of discipline and seeing how he's transforming. It, it's, it's just like, I have way more excitement seeing like the results he's getting than I ever did with any type of, race win I ever had um so I don't know I think that's just what people need to find is, is find what gets them clicking for you it's, it's getting that shot or getting that final product uh for me I want to get people stronger I think if we can just get people really to be pushing on like what they click for that's mm -hmm. that's what gets me excited just as absolutely much as all the other stuff oh yeah for sure you know it's, it's kind of funny that uh that you're, you're diving into the fitness because that was a thing that I kind of wanted to do too. Um, and I did it a little bit. Um, when I first started, I had a, a, a guy, a really close friend of mine that lived in Middletown, New York, and he was pro motocross in the ATV industry. And he was like, I'm at a plateau of, I can't go any faster. And I'm just, I don't know what else to do. And I'm like, well, I'm really heavy into the gym. And it looks like to me, that's what you're lacking is your endurance, your strength, and just, you know, having that extra grind. And he was like, yeah, put a plan together. Let me see how it's going to work out for me. I wrote up a plan and I would always go over there like every, every other weekend that we weren't racing. And, and, you know, he was winning after that. He was, his parents were like, oh my God, you made my son 10 times better than he was. And I'm like, it's, you know, that, and that brought a smile onto my face that I was helping him out, you know what I mean? And doing his media side, you know, it was like <laughs> the extra icing on the cake for me, but, you know, I don't think I would have gone any farther with it um, because I just had the end goal of I wanted to be a professional photographer, videographer at the time, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I think, I think going on that though, you have that similar mindset of like, you get that enjoyment out of seeing like when other people are succeeding from your work or getting the spotlight, because I mean, when you're doing your best work in videography, the, the spotlight is not you. I mean, it's known that you're the one that did the filming, but no one, that's not why people are really watching the video. They're not seeing you or anything like that. You're seeing someone else doing something crazy. Um, I think that's just like a cool mindset to have. I, I think it's, I don't know. It lacks, <laughs> it lacks a lot of places <laughs> nowadays. Yeah. yeah, for sure. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah, no, it was, 
Yeah, it was it was cool while it lasted. You know, I thought that maybe that would be a career, but you know, like I said, this is this is my dream job. This is what I want to do. And you know, thank thank you for having me on the podcast for your first one. I appreciate it. Um, and you know, I think this is a you know this is where I need to be. This is where everybody tells me I need to be. And you know, for you, it's, it's fitness, you know, it's, that's your thing. And I, I, I applaud that because that takes a lot of courage, you know, that's going to, that's, that makes me happy, you know, to see that you're excited to be working with other people to achieve their goals. You know what I mean? I like that. And maybe, maybe one day we could do a training video of, you know, a testimonial or something like that. When you come out with a website, you know, never, you never know. Yeah, once they get this resume stacked up, that's what's so exciting. Once we get that thing going, we should be blown up. I have some some ideas in the works, and we'll be talking oh, yeah, for dude. sure. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you still living in um, Pennsylvania? Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still in the same area, but uh, uh, I'll be in. We're going to schools all the way out in Arizona, so I'll be living in Phoenix. Holy cow! yeah I'll, all always, are over here. I'll be in the warm weather all year round so i don't know how i feel about that but we'll see <laughs> it'll be like 100 degrees when i get there so that'll be interesting but, yeah us east coast boys are definitely not used to the heat <laughs> no it's so weird i visited there a couple of times over the winter to visit my girlfriend i was like this is like crazy like i left uh out of philadelphia airport and it was like a foot of snow on the ground and i like arrived there and it's like 90 degrees i'm like what is going on Ooh, man that's crazy i instantly like stripped out of my sweatshirt sweatpants all that stuff i'm like this is gonna be interesting to get used to but i'm excited right. for it but yeah we'll have to keep in touch for sure yeah dude for sure well yeah whenever you get that clientele up and stuff like that you know i'll fly out i don't i don't got no problem with that Sounds good. Like I said, I appreciate uh, having you on uh, or you being on this. This is uh, something that I was contemplating for a while and I'm excited to jump on it. It'll probably take some time to kind of refine my uh, craft with this because it's something completely new to me. And I'm like I said, I'm an introverted person, but this is something I'm doing to push myself to talk more and hopefully shed some light on like the experiences that I've had. Because, yeah, I've, I guess you could say I've had some bad things happen and stuff, but I've met so many awesome people i've got to experience so many cool things already i'm 21 years old i have so much to be thankful for uh so the goal is to just spread that i wanted to show people that even if it's a crappy time right now this is what you can learn from it and if you're at the top of your game this is a time to remember all those hard times and enjoy it to the fullest so right absolutely goal. yeah so, preach it brother preach it yeah so appreciate it a ton having you on and uh like I said, we'll keep in touch and, uh, yeah, sounds good. For sure. Uh, Any more questions? <laughs> no, that's, that's about all I have for you now. So cool it's good talking to you. I always appreciate, yeah. uh, seeing just picking into an artist's mind. It's always cool. Yeah, so. absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, maybe this winter I'll, uh, I'll fly out and you can, you can experience some snow cross. I'll get you some vip tickets and you could get on track with me and shit that would be awesome i, I gotta watch yeah. one of these races because i'm sure it's just crazy like seeing the videos of these things are so big like i can't imagine <laughs> <laughs> it's insane it's insane i you know before we go i remember there was one video that i did um I, it was when i was in salamanca new york for i think it was 2017 if i'm not mistaken and it was a buddy of mine and it had um, the um, the uh, Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift song. Um, you know, you know what video I'm talking about? Yeah. And uh, and you comment and you're like, dude, this is absolutely insane. And I'm like, yeah, dude, it's crazy. <laughs> you know, doing like big triples that are like, you know, 80, 90 feet, and just seeing how fast they can go is. You know, I think you're kind of blown away by, you know, what a snowmobile can do. Yeah, once I started seeing your videos, I grew a whole new respect for it. that and like the ATVs. Honestly, it's it's always like the funny thing between dirt bikes and ATVs. And then when I'm watching your videos, I'm like, these guys are nuts. Like, no chance you're getting me to ever do anything close to that on a four wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty insane. I'm not gonna be at a controlled slide like that at all times and just hope like. 
no thanks right but. <laughs> you'd be shitting bricks the whole time man yeah you, yep. you'd like to get into a nice rut nice choppy yeah. rut and just go lock it and do it and, and that's yep. a good time i don't want to be sliding but uh <laughs> I'll ask one more question, actually. What has been your, like, favorite moment so far going through this? Maybe, like, favorite video or just maybe favorite moment in general that, like, you were, like, fist pumping or just absolutely smiling ear to ear? Oh, man, that's a tough one. A lot of, you know, I get that question a lot. Um, it's it's quite funny. There There is so many, you know. Um, I think either oh man there, there's so many from going to jackson wyoming to going to canada to working with aj cannon zero um to traveling throughout the whole midwest and and just seeing all the sceneries and and meeting different people i think that the the one that really sticks out in my mind is probably um Man, it's hard. It's hard to pinpoint one. Um, I would, I would say, it's a real tough one. <laughs> it, you know, it is. I had to do with that one there. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, you really, you really caught me. Um. Besides working with watching a goon like myself race a dirt bike and film, you know, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's good. You know, but those are the moments that I actually enjoy a lot more than doing all these trips because I get to step back and I don't have to be like this person that is just, I don't know, trying to be a big dog in a, or a big fish in a little pond um, or being a little fish in a big pond. Um, but I, I would say my most monumental experience would probably be uh, going to Jackson Hole, Wyoming um, in 2000 and, whew, what year was that? Um, 2016, I believe. Um, Cause going out there was, was just an experience and an awe because you got to see bison. You got to see um, mountain goats on the side of the road. I literally got to like take pictures of those things and seeing the mountainscapes and all the snow caps and and I don't know. Being in ten thousand feet was like mind blowing because you're you're literally trying to breathe walking and you can't. You're you're like. You're breathing and you're catching your breath at the same time because there's no oxygen you know what i mean i think that's to me that's probably the ultimate experience um most monumental one and i don't know it was just really cool <laughs> yeah I, man i need to go you know? there. it's like my family's like favorite place is, is jackson hole like wyoming is, is so cool from everything that i hear i need to go so so badly I might have to like make yeah. a trip up when I'm up at school because I don't think it would be that terrible to drive. Oh, dude, you're actually really close. Yeah, so you're not, you're, yeah, you're not that far away. I don't think. Make a little ski trip. I could be wrong. Yeah, absolutely, dude. The ski mountain there, um, Snow King Mountain. That's where they hold all the snow cross uh, hill climbs up there. Um, that's that's a super crazy mountain. I would not want to go down that. Um, that's probably like. Glen Helen, if if anything, with the steepness, it's probably like a nine grade. Um, yeah, <laughs> you definitely have a blast though, because you're in the in the snowboarding, right, or skiing? I'm a skier, yeah. Skier, skier. yeah. Okay, so yeah, you'd, you'd be into it. But yeah. like seeing seeing all the stuff, Yellowstone, um, Jackson Hole, um, man, there's just so many. And and if you do go rent the snowmobile and go into the back country yeah that would like, be a great time you will you would never experience anything else like that and unless you went to like Mon montana or you know utah or colorado um you know just being in seven seven feet of freaking fresh pow with 
with blue skies and mountains, it's it's breathtaking for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. All right. Yep. Well, thanks, my man. I really appreciate you doing this with me. And uh, absolutely, first, dude. And uh, like I said, we'll keep in touch, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Absolutely, man. Uh, uh, good luck, and uh, yeah, keep in touch and have fun, man. Thank you. I appreciate it a ton. Absolutely. Later. Take care.